Secret societies are everywhere, man. They're tampering with our very reality. Or at least that's the case in comic books. So, what are the best ones? Or I guess not the best, but what are 10 of them? That's what we're exploring today. <laughs> I shouldn't have said best. Let's do it. In a 10, the Illuminati. The, the Marvel one. The Illuminati is a secretive think tank of sorts that's comprised of Earth's most influential heroes, who represent diverse political and superhuman communities alike. United by crucial events too significant to confront individually, they operated covertly, sharing unique perspectives that initially fostered success. However, their past errors came back to haunt them, starting with their public exposure during World War Hulk. As crises amounted, the group faced internal divisions that seemed to spell their demise, only for subsequent emergencies to bring them back together. It's like a really toxic couple, or One Direction. The imminent multiverse collapse due to incursions pushed the Illuminati to their limits, and though they alienated allies, they managed to save the multiverse. Subsequently, the group disbanded, but later reassembled to halt the Maker after his escape from a remote prison run by damage control. But still, um, yeah, the Illuminati isn't isn't the Illuminati that you're thinking of. It's a different thing with heroes. In at nine, the Court of Owls. The Court of Owls is a secretive and violent cabal that has wielded political influence throughout history, employing architecture and planned assassinations to further their interest. Their existence is shrouded in whispers and a nursery rhyme bearing their name, which is a really weird way of recruiting, but oh well. And to execute their schemes, they use talons, a breed of highly trained assassins. The leaders, wearing owl masks, appear human, while the the rest of the court manifests as mutated human-owl hybrids with owl-like distorted faces, long claws, and animalistic behavior. Their attention was drawn to billionaire philanthropist Bruce Wayne when he announced plans to rebuild Gotham City. Consequently, he was sentenced to death by the group, and a talent was sent to assassinate him during a meeting with politician Lincoln March. A fierce struggle ensued atop Wayne Manor, and the assassin ultimately survived a fall from the building, but that's what you get when you're trying to assassinate Batman. But yeah, Court of Owls. It's a secret society, I don't know what else to say. In it ate the Spider Society, not the one you're thinking of. The Spider Society in the comics is a secret organization founded in 1099 AD in Castile, devoted to worshipping totemic spider deities. They have a long-standing rivalry with the Sisterhood of the Wasp, and their chosen warriors, known as Hunters, possess spider-like abilities granted by the spirit of the Hunter. WebCorp, based in Manhattan, New York, serves as a front for the Spider Society, hidden with multiple layers of shell companies and the like, because of course it is, it's New York, even incorporating offshore to maintain secrecy. Among their ranks are Jessica Drew and Ezekiel Sim, they were former hunters, with Ezekiel continuing until his death, and Yakorzin was initially believed to be a hunter, but she passed the true power to Nina Smith, thanks to her affiliation with the Spider Society and possession of the hunter's power, Anya gains the ability to understand the language of spider totems. Throughout history, the Spider Society and its hunters have played a vital role in the ongoing conflict with the Sisterhood of the Wasp guarding the secrets of their ancient totemic warship, but yeah, that's not it's not the, the Spider Society from the Into the Spider-Verse movies. It's, it's a different one, but uh, hey, I mean, I guess that also counts as a secret society. In its seven, League of Assassins. The League of Assassins, or League of Shadows, founded by Ra's al Ghul, operates as a covert organization with the mission of protecting its leader like a deadly fang. Its members are highly skilled killers, mastering various martial arts and obeying Ra's words without question, even in the face of death. Among the League's ranks, formidable assassins like Lady Shiva, David Kane, and expert archer Merlin have have emerged, and historically any member who failed in an assassination became a target for the League. But this approach has become less strict over time. Roz initially appointed Ebenezer Dark, who was known as Dr. Dark, as the head of the organization, and Dark, who was assisted by the Sensei, relied on cunning planning, manipulation, and elaborate traps, rather than physical prowess in assassinations. While the League boasted an inner circle of elite fighters and numerous martial arts trained warriors, its activities during Dark's leadership reflected his personal Personal strategic approach. The League of Assassins has endured as a deadly force in the shadows, carrying out its leader's agenda with lethal precision, but yeah. This 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 that's pretty scary. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest. I feel like that could be a thing in this world, but 
we wouldn't know because it's a secret. In its six, the Cabal. After the Skrull invasion, Norman Osborn, formerly known as the Green Goblin, gained control of the law enforcement agency, now named Hammer, for his actions in defending the Skrull Queen. He took charge of the Thunderbolts initiative, which absorbed the 50 states initiative, and asserted control over the officially sanctioned Avengers team by ousting Tony Stark, who was framed for the invasion and forced to go into hiding. To strengthen his position, Osborn formed the Cabal, which was a secret alliance comprising of Namor of Atlantis, Emma Frost of the X-Men, Victor Von Doom of Latveria, Loki of Asgard, and the criminal known as the Hood. Although the Cabal's members' ambitions were thwarted under the watchful eyes of Iron Man, Nick Fury, and S.H.I.E.L.D., Osborn promised to them that they would achieve their goals in exchange for their loyalty. This allowed him to present himself as the one who tamed the unruly Cabal and gained their support for his rule. As Osborn tightened his grip on power, the Marvel Universe found itself facing a new danger when, you know, Osborn has just a lot of super people underneath him. That's not a, that's never a good thing. Halfway through into number five, the Foot Clan. That's right, we're throwing some TMNT in here. The Foot Clan, also known as the Foot, serves as a ninja clan in the TMNT or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise, and it's led by Shredder, making it the primary adversary of the Ninja Turtles and their allies. Compromised of numerous faceless ninjas, the Foot Clan's main purpose is to engage in battles with just the turtles, although individual Foot Ninja uh, ninjas might not be particularly formidable. They are remarkably persistent, constantly returning to attack the turtles more and more and endure just getting their asses kicked yet again. Originally inspired as a parody of Marvel Comics Daredevil's criminal ninja clan, The Hand, the Foot Clan shares similarities with its namesake, originating from feudal Japan, practicing ninjutsu, and delving into dark arts and black magic. In their present form, they operate as powerful international organized crime rings, involved in various illegal activities, from smuggling, trafficking with arms and assassinations, but yeah, I mean with Shredder leading them, you should be scared, and they started off in comics, because Ninja Turtles was a comic, so yeah, it's gonna count for this list. And for AIM. Advanced Idea Mechanics, or AIM, is a privately funded think tank comprised of brilliant scientists whose sole mission is to gain and wield power through advanced technology, with the AIM of overthrowing governments worldwide, kind of like Elon Musk and Tesla. Their strategy involves supplying arms and technology to radical groups and subversive organizations, seeking to instigate a violent technological revolution while profiting from the chaos. The leader of AIM has been changed over time, but all leaders are bestowed with the title of Scientist Supreme, as opposed to Sorcerer Supreme. Throughout history, splinter groups have emerged due to differing agendas, and AIM's origins trace back to World War II, when Baron von Strucker gathered brilliant scientists to pursue technological means to overthrow governments, and initially connected to Hydra, and AIM developed advanced weaponry at the time. Despite Hydra's setback, the group secretly grew, making strides in robotics, bioengineering, bionics, and physics, eventually, the scientists publicly established an organization known as the Advanced Idea Mechanics. Yeah, that's, that, that's AIM. AIM's goal and activities remain subversive and covert though, and their relentless pursuit of power through tech makes them really scary because it's, it, like I said, it's it's very reflective of Elon Musk to an unsettling degree. Getting close to the end of number three, the Black Glove. The Black Glove is a secretive criminal organization seemingly led by Dr. Simon Hurt, comprised mostly of wealthy and morally corrupt individuals, I mean obviously it's a, it's a secret organization, including dictators and millionaires, they convene infrequently, possibly once a year, to place bets on life and death challenges imposed on third parties by the Black Glove. In the aftermath of the Wayne family's tragic demise, the organization attempted to perform a sinister human sacrifice, aiming to summon the Bat God Barbados and frame the Waynes for the ritual. Concealing their true intentions, the Black Glove poses a group of fluent individuals known for extravagant parties. Parties, yet the true nature of these gatherings is shrouded in mystery. Alongside their wealthy clients, the Black Glove employs a team of actors to execute their schemes. Uh, not actual actors, you know what I mean, okay? They, they employ people to do the stuff. And additionally, they maintain ties with corrupt government officials, granting them the ability to manipulate medical records and influence witnesses with extraordinary ease and speed. And yeah, it's just a powerful organization that is in Gotham, because of course it's in Gotham. Gotham is the most corrupt city in the world, and that's only in comics because they can't really beat out the real world. 
corruption. I don't know what I'm talking about. But ultimately, in number two, Hydra. Hydra, an ancient organization with a history spanning millennia, has left its mark on various civilizations and nation states. From Egypt and Imperial China to Germany and the United States, the latest incarnation emerged from the remnants of Germany and Imperial Japan after World War II. While their ideology has evolved over time, Hydra's consistent approach has always revolved around the notions of supremacy and elitism. This organization, once rigid in its selection of leaders, has now expanded its ranks beyond traditional boundaries in contrast to their post-World War II version. The modern Hydra has opened its doors to a wide range of individuals, and including not only Caucasians and Asians, but they, they recruit more people to help take over the world now. Man, even the bad guys are becoming more diverse. But, you know media is not. <laughs> and finally, in number one, the Church of Blood. The Church of Blood is a violent and secretive international cult that has endured over centuries, led by a line of leaders known as Brother Blood. This enigmatic organization is, has carefully cultivated an image of benevolence to the world, but the truth was exposed by the Teen Titans. Originating in the small European nation of Zandia, the Church of Blood's roots trace back to the aftermath of the Fourth Crusade in 1202. The Zandian people suffered at the hands of Christian knights, leading an unnamed priest to rally the people and drive the invaders away. In a ritual bathed in the blood of the fallen crusaders, the priests claimed to gain strength and immortality, adopting the title of the first Brother Blood. Under the founding Brother Blood's influence, the Church of Blood was then established, with him positioned as a divine figure of worship. Throughout the centuries, subsequent descendants of Brother Blood have perpetuated the cult, maintaining their grip on power through secrecy and deception, and I mean, it also kind of extends the, the myth that he was granted immortality. This society also made an appearance in Arrow Season 2 as the group of Miracruru powered soldiers that Slade Wilson made to, to lay waste to Starling City and get revenge on Oliver, and Brother Blood was just Sebastian Blood, but hey, yeah, it was a thing, so I I, put, I gotta put it at number one if it was in the Arrowverse. This is me we're talking about. Anyways, if you liked it, click the video, it's popping up now. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna try to hopefully not get assassinated now for all the tea that I just spilt. <laughs>